Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to present an introduction to logic. It is important for you to know that this is just an overview of logic. There are many contrasting critical perspectives of logic from which you may take from. Also, even though I would like to give observations, critiques, and philosophical analysis of logic, that would be out of the scope of this video and more generally of this channel in general. Because this channel is trying to be just math related stuff. Yeah, nevertheless, you may find down in the description uh, links to videos and channels that may treat logic in that perspective. Uh, keep in mind that I cannot guarantee that those channels are going to keep the same professional and academic language. Having said that, also keep in mind that there are many approaches for using logic. Uh, here is just going to be discussed one approach that, as you may see later, is based on truth tables. That's not the only approach to logic. There are others, and also in the channel there are going to be treated and discussed other types of approaches. But for this video, that is the one that is going to be used. So in order to start with this video, let's have a glance at mine. Uh, from the following sentences, uh, please scan them, read them in your mind. And okay, I hope you have done already that. And okay, so for the sentences, the weather is hot, uh, today is cloudy, the video is too short. Uh, well, these are examples of opinions, or at least this was my best try to just give opinions. Even more important than that is that these sentences have component size on a certain language. And it, moreover, it is on a specific language and you can give some general vagueness of what really is happening in the sentence, what is really referencing, or what is the purpose, what is being communicated, something like that. And it is also going to be dependent on context and on the person that said it. And because, of the, of, because of this and other reasons, it is suggested or it is usually considered that opinions cannot be true or false. And I mean, uh, there can be a false discussion and critique about if that can happen or not. Uh, I, I am pretty sure that some people would like to claim some opinions as false. But as I was saying, the standard thing is to consider that opinions cannot be true or false. And that is something that you may take from this video. Hey, other types of analysis or critiques is something that, for example, you could find in the videos or channels that may be linked in the description. But okay, uh, also the last sentence, watch this video till the end, which you should do, is an order. And if opinions are hard to describe or to analyze, uh, orders would be even harder than that, and moreover, uh, it would be harder to discuss if an order is false or true. Uh, that would be completely meaningless at that point. And in general, these are just examples of problematic language in general. A language can have many functions, have, can have many uses, it can have a lot of context and variations. Uh, there are words that can have a lot of intricate properties uh, between prepositions, adverbs, and conjunctions. Mm. So really, after all, uh, logic is also going to uh, shrink the uh, amount of language that is going to be considered and just take a part of it, uh, the part that can be analyzed the easiest. Also, the sentences today is Wednesday and tomorrow is Friday, and the sentence July has 31 days uh, have a different essence from the others. Uh, they can prompt uh, something in the mind just from their essence. Or, uh, for example, uh, July has 31 days may prompt uh, your mind to say, oh yeah, that's true. And the sentence 
uh, well, even faster. And the sentence today is Wednesday and tomorrow is Friday. Uh, is going to prompt in your mind that that is false. And this is very important. Uh, to some degree, uh, logic is going to try to analyze these two concepts of true or false. But again, those types of critiques and analysis are going to be a little bit aside. Um, uh, also, it is important to consider that, for example, uh, from deeper sentences, today is Wednesday and tomorrow is Friday, and the sentence now is Wednesday and tomorrow will be Friday. If they have different words, but they are pretty much saying the same, and also the, from the first sentences, a July has 31 days and there are 31 days in July. Also, it's a pair of sentences that have different words, but it's saying pretty much the same. And that is going to be said that these are sentences with different words, but with the same meaning. And meaning isn't great because that is a word that is entirely out of the scope of this video and of this channel. You may find something discussing about uh, the word meaning in the links below. And well, more important than not, uh, what is going to be discussed in logic is going to be the meaning of the sentences that are going to be shown later on. So just giving a broad uh, summary up to this point, and logic for mathematics. Logic in mathematics is going to study sentences whose meaning is true or false. And that is going to be pretty much the scope of logic in mathematics. Uh, one first thing is that this sentence whose meaning is, this is going to be pretty long to carry on throughout the discussion and through other exercises and all of that. Uh, this is just shortening it into the word proposition. So keep this in mind uh, because this is going to be the word that is going to be used in different sources, either in the internet or in books. And even more important than this is to always keep in mind that uh, sentences in mathematics are always going to be true or false. It is designed to only have a language that will be allowing that. Okay, in order to start with the discussion, we start with conjunctions. So, okay, giving a little bit of analysis, uh, let's check the next sentences. A uh, one plus one equals two, and a square has three sides, uh, rocks are plants, and rabbits are animals. Two is even, and uh, five is different than one. In showing these three sentences, there are some aspects that can be grasped. Um, uh, one first thing is that all of them have the word and in them. That is uh, an important characteristic. Also, speaking about that prompting in the mind or that prompting of intuition, uh, it can be said that the first two sentences are false and the last one is true. Uh, what is going to be the analysis behind it, well, even though 1 plus 1 equals 2 is true, and even though rabbits are animals is true, uh, we have that a square does not have three sides, and rocks are not plants. So those are false. And just because those are false, uh, we are going to say that the entire sentence that connects two other sentences where one is false, that's going to be enough for the entire thing to be false. And nevertheless, if the two things are true, as in the last case, in the last example, two is even is true, and five different than one is true, that is going to be an entire sentence that is true. And that is important to keep in mind. There is one other case that has not been considered, which is what happens if and connects two sentences that are false, both of them. Uh, 
Well, pretty much something that is already inspected, but we can do an example with the material that is already scraped. Let's say a square has three sides and rocks are flat. We have the end in there connecting the sentences. And by intuition, uh, this is going to be false. So this is a concept that is frequent in common language. We have that when we have group sentences connected by and, it is expected that the two sentences need to work together. The two sentences need to be true. And that is going to call for logic. So really nothing uh, different from what happens in logic. Um, also, there is something that is going to be added in this case. It is important to notice that AND is connecting two sentences that are at each of the sides of the AND. And so if we underline that fact, we are going to use something that is very common in math, which is pretty much a space water. So, as it was already been said, uh, these sentences uh, are true or false. So at each side of the end, we are going to find a true sentence or a false sentence. And really nothing else can happen. So if we know what is happening for one case, it is expected that we will know what happens for all cases. So in this case, I just taking out the sentences as, and leaving the true and false words, uh, let's see what happens. Well, for the first one, we have a true to the left of the end and a false to the right, and that just gives and the entire sentence is going to be a false. Uh, for the second one, and there is false and true gives false, and for the third, true and true gives true, and for the last one, false and false gives false. And now, uh, instead of having these spaces uh, and the words in there, let's change it for something a little bit more cute. A uh, little apple and a little orange. And let's just have something a little bit more graphic about what's happening. So in this table, we have the apple, we have the orange, and we have apple and orange. And since these are sentences that can be true or false, uh, well, the apple can be true and the orange can be true. The orange can be false and the apple can still be true. And now the apple can be false and the orange be true. And the apple and the orange can be false. And this would cover all of the cases. And just from the examples that are already given, uh, the apple and orange are going to be true only when both of them are true. So we have true for the first one and false for all of the other cases. This is very important perspective because we are already going to grab this, cut it out and have it all by itself. And now we are going to just replace these nice fruits by letters because that's what's done in mathematics. So having P for the apple and Q for the orange, we have P and its possible values, Q and its possible values, true or false. And then we have the P and Q is true when P is true and Q is true, and in all other cases it's false. These are all the combinations that can happen with P and Q yeah, because we are saying that they can only be true or false. And this graphic perspective is what is called a truth. But there are other types of truth tables. Uh, pretty much the idea now is that right now we are already paving the way into saying, okay, well, the first and the second column, yeah, pretty much they can remain the same, but it is possible to fill out the third column pretty much almost to our desire, in any box it can be said true or false. 
we are going to be changing what is being done between P and Q, how we are connecting the sentences. And nevertheless, it can be done. And of course, in that case, it is going to not be an AND, but something else is going to be between P and Q. So in that case, if we just get rid of what is being filled in the third column, and we just take out the AND, we are left with and a space between P and Q. And filling this out is going to be operations that are used in logic. And it is very important because this already sets kind of a paradigm for the rest of the operations. The rest of the operations that are going to be used uh, need to build this table and need to deal with true and false. So moving on to disjunction. Uh, another of the common operations in logic. And just having the sentences that were back in the AND in the conjunction, right now uh, it is just changing AND by OR. And in this case, it is important to have in mind that this OR is not as equal as the OR that is used in common day language. This is not completely about options. Uh, for example, if you go to the restaurant and you are given the option of chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream, if you choose one of them, uh, you are not going to be able to choose the other, right? Um, pretty much that idea of having an option and once you take an option, you cannot choose the other or half the other is somewhat of a different OR and also OR has a lot, a lot more uses in language. Right now here in logic, OR is going to be used for cases and in the sense that it is just needed to check all of the cases until all of them are taken out. That is pretty much what is going to be the purpose. And because of that, if we just connect a true with or with anything else, that just gives true. And the only way for or to give a false is to connect false all along the way. So, okay, having said that, uh, the first one is going to connect one plus one equals two. And just because of that, because that is true, the entire sentence connected by or is true. Okay, rabbits are animals, uh, that is true. And just because of that, uh, that sentence connected by or is true. Uh, two is even, that is true. It would not even necessary to check that it is true that five is different than by one. And one, uh, just because two is even, that is enough to say that, yeah, the entire sentence connected by or is true. Nevertheless, uh, checking that I square does not have three sides, uh, that would be a false, and also checking that rocks are in plants is also false. There is no true uh, on either side of all, so that is going to be a false. And that is the only case where an OR can be false. And as I said, uh, this OR is more about cases. It's about checking all of the cases that can happen and do it thoroughly, not just taking the first case and call it a day. No, no, no. Or is for having to check everything. Like for example, when there is a situation of risk, all the risks need to be taken out. That, that would be like an example. Okay, this also gives us a truth table already. And in this case, we just have uh, for whenever P or Q is true, uh, we have P or Q is true. And at the end, we have that if P is false and if Q is false, then P or Q is false. So as I was saying, an extra detail, and here are two sentences. Alice has a box with corn or beans, and it is true that the box has corn. I'm not, I'm not even going to ask. At this moment, by the discussion that was already being given, uh, you should not take out 
that the box still can have pins. It should still have the possibility of having pins. Maybe it does not. Maybe it does. That's one of the things in which OR can be a little bit different of what is expected. So just keep that in mind. Okay, going into negation. This is also kind of common in common language. So let's analyze a uh, one plus one equals two, five is different than one, rocks are plants, as well as three sides. And now we relate to these others. One plus one is different than two, five is equal than one, uh, rocks are not plants, and as well does not have three sides. Pretty much this is just the typical grammar negation, something from the school days, something like that. Uh, but at least for logic, uh, something that is very important is that if we start with true, we end with false. And also if we start with false, we are going to end with true. That's pretty much it. But even more important is that from uh, the case before, uh, and and or were connecting two clauses. There were two sentences being connected. Here we are only dealing with one clause at each of the cases. And that is very important. Negation always works only with one clause. It cannot work with more than one. Uh, so keep that in mind. And after all, it should make sense because it just takes one value and just either true or false and just gives the other one. Okay, so this is easy to do the table. Only one value, only P. So if P is true, not P is false. If P is false, not P is true. It can be done even a little bit more because once we have not P, that is again a sentence. For example, rocks are not plants. It's just a sentence. A square does not have three sides. That is a sentence. So we can give it another negation to that one. And that would give a not, not P being very careful with the notation. That's always something a little bit tricky. But it is just, again, changing the, the, the word for the other one. So false uh, for not P, it gives true for not not P. And for not P true, it gives mm, false for not not P. And now comparing uh, the words that are in the column of P and comparing the words that are in the column of not not P, there there would match uh, row by row. And this is important. This is called double negation elimination. This is something very common, very useful, and that happens a lot in life. So just keep that in mind. Okay, here would be some part of a first exercise. Uh, right now, we are going to just give the answer, but also P and Q is also already a sentence. It has a value true or false, so it can be negated. And that would just look not P and Q. Uh, just kind of careful with the parentheses in order for things to not look weird. And pretty much at this moment, the only thing that needs to be done in order to fill the fourth column is just to check at each word per row of the third column and just change it for the other one. So the first one would be false and all of the others would be true. So now moving on to implication. This is pretty much the starting logic. So, okay, okay, give it an analysis to the following uh, sentences. If you want to post the video and read them, feel free to do so. So, already starting a little bit of the analysis, it is important to catch that all of these sentences start with an if and they have a 10 at the middle. That is important. That's the structure of an implication. Even more, for example, the first one, if a geometric figure has four sides, then it is a square. And right now, uh, 
if you remember what I was saying about that intuition, that prompting the mind, you may be thinking, okay, this is false, right? Because I can think of a pretty weird figure of all size that is by no means close to a square. And that is true. This is false. Because you can have that type of shape. Also, if the sum of two numbers is even, then both of those numbers are even. And you may be thinking, well, this is a little bit tricky, right? Well, no, no, don't get tricked. This is also false. And we can have two equal to one plus one. And the sum of two numbers is even, two is even, and one is not even, and again, one is not even. So here is again a case where this does not happen, so this is going to be false, as maybe your intuition prompt uh, that word in your mind, and also if A and B are integers and the product AB is positive, uh, then A is positive. And okay, this might be seem like okay, maybe it's true. No, 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 this is again false. Uh, just another example two is equal to negative one times negative two. Uh, just remembering a uh, rule of science, but yeah, that, that will give the answer. And either way, either if a is negative one or if a is negative two, either way, um, it is not going to be positive, it is going to be negative and two being the product of negative one and negative two is positive. So again, this is an example that shows that the third, the third sentence is also false. And it is important to catch something. Uh, the focus to these three sentences was in the part after the then. For the first one, it was a focus in the the figure was a square. It wasn't so, it's false. Uh, there is a focus for if the two numbers are even in the second one, and we just focus on the one and the other one, and they aren't even, and that just gives the false. And for the third one, uh, there is a focus in A, and the A is not positive, so that gives that it is false. And even considering the first part of the sentence, the part that is after the if and before the then, that can be true. And actually, we were thinking that it was true. We thought in a figure of four sides, we thought in a sum of two numbers that was even, and we thought of a product that was positive. And when all of those characteristics were joined, we got that the sentence was false. So that is saying if we have P true and Q false, implication is false. And I'm going to show you later on that this is the only case where an implication is false. Uh, at least if we want to work with our intuition. I mean, we have already worked with it, but just going to give more examples. Uh, just for you to also have this in mind, this is going to be pretty much uh, the next thing. Um, so if we have P and Q, and if we have P and not Q, which is pretty much what we are having, uh, we check for P, we check for not Q, And this is going to be the same as not if P then Q. But okay, yeah, you are going to be able to check this later on. Or yeah, at this moment, you can do the table. As I had already said, the only way for if P then Q to be false is if P is true and Q is false. But okay, this would be like another exercise, but just continuing with the idea that, that I was going to show. If I am out in the rain, then I am wet. Okay, a little bit abstract, but yeah, uh, let's go on with this sentence. 
I cannot see really a big problem with this. This is easily true. But then I am going to ask something else. It, let's say that I am not in the rain. So that is false. And we just want to give an, an example where that is false, but then I am wet. I mean, we, I mean, I am still wet. That is going to be the idea. And okay, they are really not that hard. I, I mean, I could be taking a shower or I could be taking a bath. Maybe someone just uh, spilled water on me and now I am wet, but I wasn't out in the rain. So there are other options. And more importantly, the, even though there are other options, the, the intuition behind the first sentence, if I am out in the rain and then I am wet, uh, that intuition does not change. Uh, I am out in the rain, yeah, sure, uh, you are going to get wet. So the first truth really does not change, even though uh, the sentence before the then can be false. Uh, keep that in mind. There are more examples coming. If a figure is a square, then it has four sides. Yeah, sure. I really doubt uh, your intuition isn't telling you that this is true. But again, are there more possibilities for then it has four sides? Let's just say something else, something different from if a figure is a square. Just think about another option. And yeah, there are plenty of many options out there. A rectangle with unequal sides would be an option for this. Yeah, we have there a rectangle with unequal sides. That's for sure not a square, but it has four sides. And as I was saying before, even though there are cases where the sentence before the then is false, really that does not change that the entire sentence if and with the then is true. That remains being the case. And even more, I would suggest that actually when we are looking at the sentence, if a figure is a square, then it has four sides. There is a consideration of the two cases. The case where the figure is not a square, which this regardless is true, and there is the case where the figure is a square. And at this moment, we check what is after the then. We check if that is true. So in this case, we check if it has four sides. Yeah, sure, it has four sides, it passes the check, so the implication is true. Another thing that is also important to consider is for this case. If it is raining, then it is raining. I know this is weird, I know, I know. But, I mean, consider the phrase, if apple, then apple. Well, it just looks like it should work. And also the one and a four. Just saying, just saying that this is really necessary. Just in order to do any type of comparison. But okay, uh, just because of all the examples that I have shown and the idea that there are other options that can give the same result, the same conclusion, that is going to give us the table that we were doing, that we were saying before. The only case for if P then Q to be false is if P is true and Q is false. And in all other cases, it is going to be true. And well, implication is the start of logic, but just saying in this case, pretty much this table of true uh, preserves true because the idea is to always start with true 
and check if the conclusion keeps that true. When the conclusion does not keep it, then okay, implication fails. And we go for equivalence. So, okay, maybe, maybe uh, you are thinking, okay, well, implication is like one sided, it is asymmetric, it kind of does like a vague comparison between P and Q. Then, what is a true comparison? Well, it's time to compare apples and oranges. <laughs> uh, if we just want something like this, for apple and orange and just check and say okay let's see when they have a true on the same row and false and uh, it is going to give true but if apple is true and orange is false or if apple is false and orange is true that is going to give false as i was saying it's just a comparison and checking if they match it gives true if they do not match it gives false this is going to be an equivalence. It is important to notice that this is an evenness pattern. So as I said, evenness, well, as I said in another video, evenness happens everywhere, but okay. And now it is time to express an equivalence. So for example, in this case, we have apple if and only if apple, okay, nasty. I know, but well, those are the words that are used commonly. And here we have another example. A is even if and only if A is a multiple of two. Okay. And the connector is going to be that if and only if. Just for you to keep in mind. Okay, going for the B conditional. This is just for completion. The, the top part is already gone. So joining everything, uh, okay, a mess, a complete mess. But this is pretty much just using the symmetry or the anti-symmetry of implication for something else. So just filling in the table. So we go for the third column. The third column is just if P then Q. So true, false, true, true. Now we go for if Q then P. In this case, uh, we just check where P is false and Q is true. So in this case, we are going to true, true, false, true. And keep an eye on that. And okay, I'm pretty sure you are going to try the end on your own. Just fill in the P column. And that's going to be pretty nice. And okay, this entire expression this very large expression is called a B conditional. And well, if you have already finished the fifth column, it is going to be the same as the column for the equivalence. And this is pretty much saying that in order to check for an equivalence, in order to check if B matches Q as true or false, it is just necessary to check uh, two implications. And this is a nice perspective of logic. For example, there are some details. Uh, if A is equal to 100, then A is equal to 10 square, then it is a perfect square. This is a chain of implications. Uh, be careful with this one. And also A is even if and only if A is a multiple of two, and if and only if A is not odd. I'm very careful, very careful with this type of chains. I'm not going to say much about this, just think of these ones as the chains of inequalities. For example, when we have two is less or equal than three, less or equal than four, and this one is broken into two is less or equal than three, and three is less or equal than four. And this is how we break these ones, and these chains of implications and of the conditional or implications are going to work this way. Keep this in mind. Okay, spoilers. Okay, I already give the warning. Okay, there. Are. Okay, 
going for tautology. So a shiny word. Yeah. Yeah, there is not going to be really that deep for tautology. Yeah, tautology is just going to be when the third column is always true. All of all of the boxes are true. This is a tautology. It is important for arguments and and it is nice in logic and very much studied because when we have something that is always true, well, it doesn't matter from where it came. We just get a very long expression that is always true. And that's nice. So keep that in mind. Uh, here is an example for you to fill in. So if P, then P or Q. Okay, there are a couple of steps that need to be done. But yeah, this one is going to be true in all of the boxes. Okay, give it a check. And okay, we go for contradiction. Uh, the contradiction is going to be false in all of the boxes. An example is just going to be a negation of any tautology. And okay, we are ready for arguments. And we go for one of the sentences with which we started the video. Today is Wednesday and tomorrow is Friday. We were already saying that it was false, but maybe there is something back in there that can be said a little bit more about this one. And it can be done. Uh, for example, if today is Wednesday, then tomorrow is Thursday. Okay. And if today is Thursday, then today is not Friday. Okay. And okay, there are a couple of details between tomorrow and today. Okay. As I said, uh, language is a little bit complex, but this already gives a couple of claims, which I'm sure that you can agree that the last, well, the second and the third are true. And we can do an entire argument with all of this, which logic is going to give certain rules for giving conclusions to arguments that are very precise, and those are going to be inference rules that is going to be a topic for another video. But for example, just using all of these sentences, all of these claims, the three of them, this is going to give a contradiction. This is always going to be false. And moreover, even do we end up with a contradiction, there are even more rules of arguments that are going to say that, okay, then today is Wednesday and tomorrow is Friday, okay, this is false. And there are plenty of rules about our arguments, at least in logic, which are going to be given in another video. And just because I like this one, this is a gem in process, and we are going to check the exclusive discussion. This is probably that uh, nagging feeling from the OR. Yeah, this is more close to the OR that is used in common language. Pretty much the OR is true for almost any case, except when we have false everywhere. And if we want options, well, that cannot be taken all of them, uh, we want to have a false for the true true. And this is the exclusive OR. It is usually shown with an X before the OR. Uh, interesting notation. And actually, this logical operation is very interesting. It, again, has an evenness pattern, so keep that in mind. And it has a couple of properties, which I really like. Uh, there are going to be a couple of exercises and results discussed throughout the channel for this operation. But this video is already too long. This was just an introduction, so this is the end. But before the end, <laughs> well, an application of the exclusive disjunction just for you to keep this in mind is if you have a staircase and you have switches at the top end and the bottom, and okay, you just want to turn on a light when you are going to, you are going up in the staircase or down. And so, yeah, this switch is being connected by an XOR. 
So keep this in mind. It has a couple of uses. Huh? So I was saying, I really like this, this logical operation. And I said, there are going to be exercises and results about the XOR in the videos of this channel. Well, now, as I said, this is the end. Let me know if you like the video. Uh, you can leave me questions and comments. If you want me to treat a certain topic in which you are interested, uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.